test. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our session. So we're going to do a session today that's part way, more of like a typical, you know, we tell you what we're working on. And but we also have an interactive part, which is why you see all of these post-its and papers up here. So we're going to start with first talking about a little bit about this session today, and then we'll get into the activities. So first, welcome to Organize Better, Tools for Events, Wiki Projects, and Collaborative Activities. So agenda, we'll do the intro, then we'll do some interactive group activities, um, then we're going to present some of the work that we've done, talk about some future plans, and then take questions. So first, who are we? I'll let Alex introduce himself. Uh, hi, I'm Alex Stenson. I'm a lead program strategist. And my focus is on the socio-technical side of campaigns and organizing. So how do the humans organize themselves to use the tools? And hi, I'm Alana. I'm the product manager for the campaigns team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And we focus on building and improving tools for organizers. OK. So the campaigns team is, we're really focused on how people create community and come together for Wikimedia projects. Both Alex and I work on campaigns. We might do kind of different things, but this is what brings us together, is we're really focused on creating community on the projects. Um, so now we're going to start an interactive activity. So for virtual attendees, we do have a Miro board. All of you lovely people are in person, so instead you're going to look at the table that might be nearest you. So apologies if you just sat down and now you might need to get up and move. Um, but the first activity is why are we here today? So I'll first intro the activity and then you guys will get up and then we'll do it together. So first, how do people connect on the wikis? So there's different ways people connect. There's events like campaigns, edit-a-thons, meetups. There's also wiki projects. And then there's other forms of collaboration. So by this, we mean things that aren't formalized. It's not a formal event. It's not a formal wiki project. But people care about the same task or the same topic. So they find ways of coming together and working on it for a period of time. So why do people connect? Different people have different reasons. But some common reasons are they might want to improve content on the wikis. They might be really passionate about a topic. They want to build and share skills and make friends, whether informally or more formal friends. There's the connection that's desired by many people as well. So now we have a question for all of you, which is, why are you here? I mean, it could be why you are at Wikimania, why you are at this workshop. But what makes you interested in either organizing or participating in collaborative activities on the wikis? So what we would like to do is for people to take you know, five, 10 minutes. We have a lot of pens. We have a lot of post-its to write down why you do, or maybe if you don't, why you don't participate in activities that are collaborative on the wikis. So um, we have two parts here, why you organize, why you participate. You can add to both. But we're really interested in what people have to say. Um, so maybe for those who don't want to move, I can pass out some post-its. Yeah. yeah. How do we do that? Um, and pens. And yeah. Color doesn't matter for this activity. The next activity, color does matter. But doesn't matter for this one. And you can write multiple reasons. And once you've written them, you can hand them to me, and I can put them up here. Or you can come up and put it directly on the wall. And can you give me something to write with, please? Yes. Cool. Yeah, the questions are on the board. Why do you organize activities and why do you participate in activities? Who needs a pen or a post it? In the Wikimedia movement or like as an activist? Uh, see. And by activities, again, we need events. It can be wiki projects or other forms of collaboration. Like, why do you collaborate uh, or organize collaboration? Uh, 
organize. George and I can pull your stickies up if you need help. <laughs> nice. So we're starting to get some answers. Folks have their own projects they want to create. You want to promote awareness about the Wikimedia movement and kind of counter bias outside the community. To make things move quicker, speed things up. Collaboration, make, oh, more hands makes everything easier. And folks like to participate because they like to learn from others. So folks believe in uh, uh, having collaboratives. They organize to bring other people together and write on specific topics, make sure that the gaps that we see get filled. So why do you participate and why do you organize? I, I know I identify with this. I'm an advocate and a teacher, and so uh, someone said they like to teach and advocate. That's why they organize. It's part of being part of a community. And folks like to participate in activities to learn how others organize. And sharing ideas with other people through similar experiences really helps create innovation, right? For anyone also who just joined, we're sharing our answers to these two questions. Why do you organize activities? Why do you participate in activities? If you like to add your ideas to this first part, you can raise your hands and we can bring you some post-its and some pens so you can write down your responses. Oh, I, I, I read most of them, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> my, my handwriting is worse than all of yours, so I'm, I'm, you're in good company. Um, so there, there's a lot about like finding space with others, learning, filling gaps, being part of activism or collectives, making sure that the Wikimedia projects are understood or the gaps on them are understood. Fun, fun's good, I love fun. Uh, collaboration, connection, participation, yeah, content gaps. Uh, exploration and learning. I know I just show up to events because I don't know much about something, right? It's an opportunity to be part of a community. Anyone else want to highlight something that I haven't mentioned that you had in your own sticky? <laughs> Meeting other nerds. Amen. <laughs> 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 I, I, I love when we get together at Wikimedia events, on Wiki conflict and copyright come up inevitably, right? We're those nerds. Uh, yeah, does, so does this feel like a real representation of what we see in our communities and why we organize? Yeah, do, do you have a hand or? No, no. Uh, does anyone wanna share any uh, other observations of like the movement and organizing and participation? Yeah. We, we need metrics. We want to see this joy, this collaboration, these opportunities. Like the reason we organize is the, the love and care and connection, right? Connection's what drives a lot of this. Cool. Anyone else want to share something else? Okay. Okay, so we discussed. So now we'll go to activity two. Organizer joys and pains. So one of our theories in uh, when we think about organizing in the Wikimedia movement is that there's a tension between the things that get us excited and the things that make it really painful to organize. And that's why we stick around, or that's how we stick around if the joy is greater than the pain in a lot of ways, right? So if we have more joy as organizers, we do more stuff, it's easier, it feels fun. And if those like stupid on wiki discussions that pull us down 
are not the main thing that's involved in organizing, then we keep doing it, right? It's fun, it's a joyful. And we think there's a lot more opportunity to increase the joy and reduce the pain uh, as a group. But we wanna understand like what parts of organizing are joyful and painful for you, so. So we have an activity where we have outlined some common workflows that go into organizing. They might not be everything you do. There might be something missing. And if that's OK, you can just write your own card. But I'm just going to outline what these are. And the reason I wrote them in advance is so it's easy for us to compare and contrast how we feel. Some people might think, think some things are kind of easy. Some people might think they're really hard. So it's a way for us to see the differences. So the first category is wiki page, which I believe is the orange sticky. So that's really about creating and maintaining the wiki page for your activity. So that could be the event page, that could be the wiki project page, everything that goes into the wiki page management. Then there's work lists for activities that are around, you know, that have a backlog of things to do, which are many activities. This is everything involved with creating the work list, managing and curating the work list, sharing the work list. Then we have finding participants. So once you've created your event page or your wiki project page, once you have a work list, how do you get people to actually join? How do you find them? That's what finding participants is. Finding activities is actually more about knowing what's going on outside of your event. Do you know what's going on with other organizers and what they're working on? Maybe around similar topics, similar time frame. What's your visibility around stuff beyond your organizing? Then there's communication. So Throughout the course of your organizing, you probably want to communicate before, after events, in the middle of an event, or if it's a continual engagement or activity, you want continual streams of communication, ideally. Is this something you're able to do with ease? Supporting newcomers. Um, if you focus on activities, then any way support newcomers, how do you feel about that? How difficult or joyful is that for you? Then we have participant data. So this is everything related to statistics on maybe who's coming, demographics around them, what they need. Is that something that you're finding joyful or painful? And then lastly, to go into the previous comment, tracking impact. So tracking and reporting on the impact of your activity. It could be around contributions or it could be other things. But what ultimately, whatever you think is the impact that you want, how is that tracking going? So those are the things we have. And here is our lovely poster paper thing right here. <laughs> So we have one end joy on the other pain. So joy means that things are easy, fun. You're basically getting out of it what you want to get. Your goals are being met. On the other end, you have pain. So it's hard. It's not fun. Your goals are not being met. You're feeling stuck. You don't really know what to do next, maybe. So we're really interested in seeing uh, you know, for whatever workflows you take part in, maybe it's all of them, maybe it's some of them, you can take some of these you know, post-its right here. And then on this spectrum, we'd be interested in seeing where you would place them. So we'll take now some time for you all to review some of these cards and some of these concepts. Feel free to add any others that you think are missing. Uh, so there's sticky notes up here for all seven of these concepts. And yeah, you can either come to one of the tables or Anthony and George are gonna have a few uh, on them. And uh, come choose how much joy or pain you get from some or all of these workflows. Pick the ones that most affect you. You don't have to write don't anything. Have to write. You just need to come to these post-its and find which ones apply to your work and then add them to the board. Yeah, and for those of you that just walked in, since we're all moving right now, you, there's extra chairs on the side of the room, so you can come in. So come get some stickies, join us at the poster, and put it on the joy to uh, pain spectrum. You can add more, you can do it on one that doesn't already have one, yeah. So I personally see a lot of pain when folks have trouble building work lists. So I'm going to put it on the pain end of the spectrum. OK. 
can. Yeah. And we just want to so see what the consensus is. <laughs> yeah. A joy, one joy. Yay. <laughs> So a few people yeah. get joy from supporting yeah. newcomers, New creating wiki pages. Okay. Yeah, put it in the middle. It doesn't have to be on the end. We're looking for the spectrum. Activate on the French Wikipedia. Get member of Sambash here. Like talk about. <laughs> so people like making the wiki page. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> And put it on the spectrum, right? So if it's all the way on the left, or all the way on the right, it's joy. And if it's all the way on the left, it's pain. Does anyone over here want us to pass out some of the stickies to them? To all of you, anyone sitting here? Is oh, no, I mean, we can help pass stuff out. Do any of you want some stickies passed out? <laughs> yeah. That's totally fine. We're glad you're here. Yeah. Does anyone else want stickies in this group? Okay. So I'm I'm noticing a lot of joy for the wiki page, which is surprises me a bit. <laughs> uh I, I don't like wiki pages personally, but wow. uh finding participants. There's oh. overwhelming pain yep. on finding the participants. I that, that is good to know. Work lists, mixed, a yeah. bit of mixed bag. And tracking and participant data, mixed bag. Some people like it, some people hate it. Any other joys or pains? Does anyone want to observe why they put something on the joy or pain spectrum? Does anyone want to describe why they put their sticky up? For me, I put the, like uh, finding participant in the pain part because I have a student club in Turkey and finding a new team member as a student is uh, so hard because they don't have that motivation or they already have an idea about Wikipedia that or professor says that it's not a good thing to do, so yeah. I actually didn't mention, I'm Pavel from Czech Republic, I actually didn't mention one thing which is um, I would say inaccurate. It's not finding participants, but it's more of uh, like participants uh, submitting themselves or applying and not showing up. That's what happens mm. usually for the events we, we organize. Even it could be like a, a course for seniors, and there's like twelve people uh, in the list, and you say, "Okay, that's almost the limit for this course," and then four of them show up. So it's like it's like sixty percent of you know unsuccess of this yeah so so the rate is really really huge and this is this is a problem so it's not about finding the participants uh, i'm happy with having two of them but just i want two people on the list and two people showing up <laughs> if it's could happen but this is voluntary work right so um you hardly can punish them for that <laughs> do you think that part of that problem is related to other things like communication or the wiki page or there's something that makes it hard to fully motivate everyone well yeah i think um uh, for seniors for example it's a problem to find information that's that's easy. they get a link and they forget they got it in the email so they can find it so they're a bit confused and so on and uh uh, the communication, yeah, I think y you obviously have to be smart about how to remind them that the event they applied for is coming closer, that it starts in a week, that it starts tomorrow, and so on. So so I think this is quite important part, and you hardly can spend more hours on this, or we can, but uh, you still have to think of the capacity you have for, for doing this. But yeah, but communication is, is important part of it, yeah. When we tried the new uh, events tool that your team designed, some participants on the French Wikipedia complained that uh, when they tried to register it, it was all in English, and some uh, of them didn't understand and just went out. And then afterwards, they came to the event because it was advertised as being opened, and we could not add them. Uh, 
And I know a new functionality exists where now they can be added during the event, but we can still not add participants ourselves. And this is something we really need for newcomers because they get lost, they don't know how to do it, and uh, otherwise it, the impact is not uh, tracked correctly. <laughs> Yeah, so I think what you're talking about there is an event page on Meta where, you know, someone goes to it and they don't have their interface, their language changed, right, for the preferred language to say French. So it looks like English. And if they were in the know, of course, they could change it to French, but that's not the case. So, yes, Meta is helpful when someone wants to do global organizing, but it has its problems. And if an event is really just targeting French speakers, Ideally, it would just be on, say, French Wikipedia or whatever the French project is. So we want to roll out the extension to more wikis. Uh, we participated in a panel earlier, I think a few days ago, on community configuration. So what we're hoping to do is, through community configuration, allow wikis through their admins to decide to turn on event registration. So then it could be in French Wikipedia or Italian or any language. So that's what we're hoping. Meta was our early testing ground, but we know it doesn't satisfy all the needs and use cases. As for adding participants, that's something they've actually been hearing some people bring up during Wikimania. So it's really good to hear that feedback and that's something that we can bring back to the team after Wikimania and talk about. One of the things that has been traditionally nice about event registration is we know that everyone who joins, they chose to join, right? They registered. But there's use cases where maybe that's not the case. We've talked about, well, maybe after someone, you know, is registered as the participant by the organizer, they can get some notification and lets them know that the organizer added them. So there's still some safety checks in place. So we can explore that. I think I'm really glad you're bringing it up. Yeah. And what we we love about the joy pain spectrum actually is the diversity. Right. So all of us in the movement are experiencing some of these same steps over and over again when we organize. But the more you kind of look at the diversity of who's doing what, where, the more you realize that some people really enjoy what they're doing now and some of them really hate it. And it's, there's a lot of tension. And so what I love is there's a lot of diversity, but at the same time, it makes it very hard to figure out what the best solutions are. Does anyone else want to highlight a joy or pain why they highlighted something? Uh, I've heard the pain of communication at, on the tip of the arrow, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's because uh, it's partly from uh, due to technical issues, and also because I am on the aesthetic spectrum. So, and I still try to organize things, <laughs> and uh, it's very, very um, difficult for me to use. Uh, Irregular images because the uh, user interface usually uh, of those uh, uh, mailboxes are not very good or easy for the eye, or and are usually very cluttered. Uh, sometimes the tech is very long and very tiny, uh, so I really would like uh, a better way to design. Uh, rich and illustrated uh, post uh, when I publish updates and where I uh, publish uh, some uh, summary about what's in going to be needed uh, for the event. Like for example, bring your or laptop or bring a book or, br or take a few pictures of the place if you like. Uh, so I show you how to use commands and things like that. Yeah, persuasive communication is often one of those challenging things to do in the Wikimedia movement because we don't always have the tools to do something rich or precise or tested. Um, so yeah, and accessible as well. Yeah. Hello, I'm Anton Abozhin, a user to home from Ukraine, and I am a frequent uh, organizer or jury member or both in uh, article contests and uh, photograph contests. And uh, uh, that is quite an interesting process, but uh, we have a bottleneck which uh, 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 makes uh, all of our work lag behind. That is uh, uh, 
uh, evaluating uh, articles or uh, photographs because uh, uh, everything else could be uh, automated or reused for, from the last year, like wiki page, you just copy the one from the last year and change the year uh, by incrementing the previous year. Uh, you uh, address all the participants from the last year, uh, you, uh, for communications, you just use central notice and uh, a couple of Facebook groups, that is uh, easy. Uh, but when it comes to evaluating uh, articles and f or photographs, that is a real pain because, for example, on uh, the CE Spring in 2018, we received something over 2,000 articles, <laughs> and uh, we had a very hard time evaluating them. We mobilized all the administrators, all the patrollers to check them, uh, and uh, uh, the contest ended uh, in May, and on we only evaluated everything in November. Uh, and for me personally, uh, I checked uh, first 50 articles aside to me, it was interesting, I learned something new, I uh, had fun reading them, and after 500 articles uh, that I checked, I thought like, oh my god, when will this finally end? I want to finish <laughs> it already. Uh, so that is the thing that makes our organizing contests uh, a pain in the ass, but I don't really know uh, how to address it, maybe with AI somehow, or I don't know. Yeah, quality is always a, a challenging part, especially when you have a lot of newcomers. Uh, so one of the things we're kind of beginning to look at is how do we get better at recruiting experienced editors where you don't have to worry as much uh, about the quality. Um, any other highlights folks want to bring up? The only question I have is we usually hear about the difficulties in tracking impact, but I see that there's two that listed as a joy, which surprised me. Do any of the joy and impact people want to bravely speak up? Or metrics, or joy metrics? and impact or metrics. Everyone complains about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can just continue. Maybe it'll come up later. So we just did this activity to share pain and joy. This was really illuminating, so thanks everyone who shared their pains and joys. Um, the last activity that we're going to do before we share more information about the tooling is visions for the future. So communities can provide a sense of belonging, they can mentor newcomers, create high quality content and address knowledge gaps. But we also know that there's a lot that can be done, a lot of pains that are experienced today that make it harder for us to live up to the potential of the communities that we wanna take part in or the things we want to organize. So this last activity is more future thinking. It's a little harder in some ways because it's not about what is in front of us immediately, but what we would like to see further along. So the questions we have are, what do you want to get out of collaborative activities on the wikis? And what would you need to be able to get there? So we have two parts here. What do you need and how will we get there? So for some of you, there might be more specific things you have in mind. It's like, oh, I really wish this tool or this feature existed. Other people may have larger or more conceptual ideas they have in place. But if there's something that you really have wanted that you're not seeing today, this is really useful for us to know because we're thinking about this stuff now. And we're thinking about what we can do to improve the situation. So we'll take a few more minutes for people to write down their ideas and then add it to this last paper here. So in a dream world, what are the things you need to have even more joy from the organizing you're doing? So there's stickies. Yep. So who wants a sticky? It is kind of warm in here. Yeah. 
<laughs> you guys are sticky. Can we vacuum sticky? Oh yeah, of course. Let's see. There's a bunch here. Does anyone want me to take something up for you? Anybody else need stickies? Sorry. Okay. So, so the what do you needs are looking a lot at user friendliness and retention. So how do we retain newcomers? How do we make it easier for people to stay around? How do we follow up after events? Going from the event to the online community. Anyone else want to describe a need? And I saw we had one or two comments online focused on making kind of healthier uh, online communities. OK, so we had some more, more focus on languages other than English. Amen. Uh, Sending email to participants recommending several events. Generated automatic uh, calculation of retention data. Ways to figure out how to make people bigger parts of the movement. More funding, always. More community support, always. I agree. Ways to contact people after events to show interest. A, B testing, help testing what works, what doesn't. Getting rid of the wiki jargon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> uh, more friendly and specific structures for newcomers. Ways for the newcomers to stay active. I, I, there's themes here, right? We all put all this energy, joy, and pain into organizing events. And then we realize the newcomers are having a hard time staying around. It's heartbreaking, right? Um, every time I look at newcomer events, it's always like less than one in 20 people are really sticking around, right? It's, it's that one, two, three people in the 20 person event, or it's the experienced editors. It's a lot of work. Many of you spend 10, 20 hours running an event and you don't retain people. This. Uh, so ability to translate for multilingual events. So easier translation, easier collaboration in multilingual spaces. Amen. Yeah, observation. I think also we are very focused on events um, especially on the foundation side, because we need metrics and everything. But as a founder of Les Sans Pages on the French Wikipedia, I'm also interested in um, having the impact and metric for the project, and there's no tool th that does that. Um, I have to think about ways of uh, measuring the participation on a specific project on the wiki, and that would be great if you, we could have a tool. Because some people ask me, how many people are on the project? I am incapable of saying that, because the people who write their pseudo on a specific page, some of them don't like the project and do it for trolling. Some other just put their name up and never come back. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit difficult, like uh, having an idea of uh, 
participant uh, that uh, add an article to the project would be very useful and knowing when they do so, when they drop down to be able to reach out to them, that would be very useful. I think the foundation is much, much too event oriented when what we need is more, for example, we need more, more women on the project, not only in, in the events and organizing events. <laughs> Well, this is really helpful for us to hear. And that's one of the reasons when we've sort of been framing the questions, we've been trying to say events and wiki projects and other online collaborations. So the campaign team, we've historically focused more on events, but we're starting to try to find ways that the work we do can cater to more to events. Because if you think about it, a wiki project or other online collaborations, they're also having people join. They're also tracking work. They also want to understand the impact. So there's these common needs. So what can we generalize? What can we learn about common pains and joys and what people need so we can build more general solutions? And just one observation to that, though. Uh, the event is historically where we do the front door to the movement, and we haven't looked at the rest of the process of bringing people on. And that's where all your pain was, all your hopes and joys and needs, right, was the retention of people. How do they find community on the wikis if they're not those of us who are super technical, right? And so that's part of the reason we want this workshop, is that's a, a place that we need to really investigate and explore. Yes, and um, this has, has to do with languages yet again, because what you can't do is somebody says, well, I don't understand English. Oh, look it up on the translation page. Get it translated by the machine. Okay, machine translation has its limits, and it's not the same as interpreting. Just because you know two languages, it doesn't mean you know how to interpret. Okay, and it's easy to be trained, and you have, but you have to do it, and it exists and acknowledges it exists. We aren't against machine translations. All persons who have studied translations and modern languages, we have been trained in modern tech, but also from the days when you, you couldn't understand it, would go from, and Siemens started it, by the way, the Germans, machine translation. So, you know, you can't uh, uh, act as if the solution is in, is in the computer, huh? because it becomes like this, uh, the joke in, uh, what was it called, Little Britain. The computer says no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's your attitude a bit. Well, I, I think one principle that our group has focused on is we really want to create as much community opportunity to coordinate and communicate with the participants. And that's kind of the core of good organizing and good community building, right? It's a genuine communication between the organizers and participants. So I agree 100%. We can't machine translate our way out of the, the problem. Anyone else want to make observations about what you really need, what you hope for the future? Yeah, James. I think the single biggest pain point for event organizers who special who focus on editing events is when you end up with conflict online between you, the organizer, and the event people at the event, and people online who you may or may not know who may interpret the edits that are being made in a certain way, either the edits just aren't particularly high quality or they think that there's some conspiracy going on. You know, I've seen, but basically the, what it feels like is that some person appears out of nowhere to mess with you and it, it feels very frustrating. It's even frustrating to me as someone who is one of those longtime Wikipedia editors who knows how everything works. It can often feel very isolating and challenging and being able to provide social support in those situations is really valuable. Um, so my contribution would be towards um, uh, we having something like training the um, participants um, privately. How do I put it now? I've attended one session before by Alex and I think by Ifemia, Ifemia uh, Organizer Lab. So that's a kind of um, program whereby organizers are trained how to, we undergo like six months or I, I can't remember exactly more like three months sessions. So I, I'm suggesting that we if we can have something like that for um, participants too. Though we have people that have been contributing to um, translations, they have they get trained. But for someone like me or other people that contribute to English Wikipedia, that's kind of 
a bit technical, and a lot of people get blocked. So when they are contributing to projects, so uh, I would appreciate if there is a kind of um, training. Aside we training them during the, the um, duration we used to train, um, these participants are not very much. Like a month project, you train for just two weeks, and that's not, that's not enough to actually contribute meaningfully to a project. So you're talking about it as more of like a course than a you know yeah a day like a course yeah I, I've been seeing some courses online like WikiLearn that they can but no not many people do actually use all these courses so like a continuous training like one on one training for participants will, will actually go a long way. Yeah, we, we the training is always very complicated, right? Because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and we haven't quite teased apart why uh as a collective and and it's very challenging with the languages and the context and cultures and differences we, we have another observation back there the battery is on this one works yes um Maybe it will be uh, useful to have some kind of uh, tips, templates, and tools to, like, uh, regroup articles or from a team or a category easily uh, to launch an event. Like, uh, for example, oh yeah, I met uh, this guy at this organization. It will be like uh, uh, very nice to do something about this theme. And what can you can I, what can I find? was this time uh, for this project so I can uh, um, make uh, some kind of easy event uh, to kickstart the thing and maybe go more in depth after uh, for other events or also uh, where can I find a few nice templates to make uh, the post and the em uh, email or the landing page of, of the event sexy and well illustrated so th there's a lot about design and communication and making sure people have the right ways of contributing. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. figure out the right topic area, right contributions for the event, totally. For example, an issue I got with uh, the librarian of uh, my city is there are a lot of books. It's a, it's a small city, so uh, the public library is quite uh, wide and, and large with a lot of uh, books. And the question of the people uh, for the digital uh, workshops was, uh, sure, but what do you want to uh, do uh, during the event? What do you want to edit? So if I say everything, it won't <laughs> be a good answer for them. And that's what we hear from organizers all the time, is finding the right topic, the right audience, and giving them the right tools to be successful is always how we actually keep them around and motivate them. So do you think we're ready to yeah. look at the? So we're going to continue now. Um, thank you, everyone, for everything you shared. So on, you can hear me? There. Um, now we're going to talk about what we've built so far. Some of what we built aims to address some of the pains you all shared. And then there's a lot of stuff that we can do that we haven't done yet that could further address some of them. So first, um, as the campaigns team, our primary work has been on the campaign events extension. So the campaign events extension provides tools for organizing events and collaborations on the wikis. Um, this is meant to provide some visualization of what it does. So there's three primary things that it helps with right now. It helps with finding people to invite. So that's in the finding participants pain point registering participants, as well as some management of events. So we provide some participant statistics, the ability to email participants. We have integration with the programs and events dashboard. And for those who receive grants from the foundation, we have grant ID support. Um, and then we also provide some ways, new ways to promote your activity because we have a list of all the events that use event registration as a global automated event list. So, for any wiki that has the extension enabled, uh, there's a few changes that someone would see. So there's a new user group called Event Organizers, which is managed by wiki admins. And there's two new namespaces, Event and Event Talk. So this is an example of what an event page with registration would look like. So here you see it's in the event namespace, event colon, the name of the event. And then there's a header at the top where someone can register for the event. 
Now, this page was set up by someone who had the event organizer right. If someone didn't have the event organizer right, they couldn't add the registration header. However, anyone can register as a participant. So some usage so far is that it's on MetaWiki, Arabic Wikipedia, Swahili Wikipedia, and Ebo Wikipedia. These are the wikis where the extension has been enabled so far. It's been used by, for over 500 events and 8,000 registered participants. And um, this is an example of, actually this is, yeah, this is from my own <laughs> event organizer panel um, because I've used the tool myself to organize some office hours and consultations for the team our work is done. So if you're an organizer, you can see a view of all the events you organized, um, some information about it, number of participants, and if I were to click on any given link, then that's kind of my management of the event specifically where that happens. Um, now, a little more about the event organizer, right? It's controlled by wiki admins. So if someone had the extension on their wiki and they wanted it, um, there would be a process that was set up by the wiki admins for how one requests it, but usually it's very basic. For example, on MetaWiki, someone will say they, why they want the right, what their global edit count is, and it's usually given by the wiki admins very quickly. Um, it only impacts organizer tools, not editing workflows. So this is another important point. Uh, the user right doesn't give you privileges that might you know, uh, have some major consequences generally on the wiki, so it's not gonna change how, you know, pa if pages can be changed in any way, it's not gonna do anything other than give you the ability to organize with our tools. Um, and if someone doesn't have the right, like I said before, they can still use the participant side of the tools. Uh, so the main feature that's a part of the extension is event registration. Uh, it, we call it event registration because it started as a registration tool, but we've actually expanded it so it's more than just registration now. So some of the features include public and private registration. So what this means is if someone registers for an event, they can choose to register publicly, and that means everyone can see their username. Or they can register privately, which means only the organizers of the event can see their username. Um, optional demographics information, here's an example here. So the organizer can choose to ask questions like the gender, age, profession of the participants, and then they see statistics on those participants at the end of the event. Confirmation emails, so after someone registers, they get an automatic confirmation email sent. Uh, you can also email participants, so anyone who has an email address associated with their account, you can select those users, and then you can email them. Dashboard integration, so this means that if you have a dashboard event, anyone who publicly registers for your event, their username gets pushed to the dashboard event. And then finally, grant ID support. So if you get a grant from the foundation, you can enter in the grant ID, and then data analysts from the foundation have an easier way of getting data on your event and its impact. Uh, event list is a newer feature we have. So what it is is that it provides a way to easily see all the events that are going on that use event registration. So it's automated. If you use event registration, you don't have to do anything. Your event will already just appear in this list. It's global. It's accessed via special all events. So any wiki that has the extension enabled can go to this list and they can see all the events. Um, and there's also some search filters available. Right now it's pretty basic. You see it's keyword, meeting type, date range, but we want to add more filters over time so you can really zone in on what you're interested in finding. And then we have a new feature called invitation lists. So what this is is a way for you to find people to invite to your event based on their contribution history. So if you have the event organizer right, you can go to a new page, special generate invitation list, and you add in your work list, and then from there, once you click generate, then we will generate an invitation list for you, which is a re recommended list of people you can invite to the event, because, or your wiki project, because they made significant contributions to articles in your work list. So what we use for the criteria is the byte counts in the article from the, those users, the number of edits they made in the article, their edit count overall and their recent activity, and from there we create a sort of list of people who you can choose to invite. So right now it's on the beta cluster, but we're planning to release it to wikis that are interested that have the extension after Wikimania. So that's some basics around what we've had built so far. Before we go to the next section though, I'm wondering if anyone has any questions. And we realize it's a little warm. And it's very it's a warm. Good, it's a good <laughs> moment to, to relax at the end of your Friday. Yeah. 
Is there an easy way to find those links? Uh, like, will they be on the other pad or? Um, it, it, it's in the slide deck. Uh, so the slide deck is attached to the this today's event, and you should be able to open it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, all the links, everything is there. Uh, maybe some uh, do to evaluate uh, uh, to run article contests w w which will track which article were uh, uh, which article were nominated for the contest uh, automatically check if the uh, uh, do not violate rules if they are eligible for this. Uh, uh, having an interface for jury to evaluate them and calculating uh, the scores, uh, determining uh, the winners, uh, the special nominations. Well, now uh, there are some, uh, but uh, the. Uh, there are frequent problems that first uh, they may be very specific they can be written for one contest specifically and for another they should be adopted or rewritten or another problem is that uh, even if there are um, broader tools which can uh, uh, work for uh, more uh, 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 article contests. Uh, they are usually written by one user who sh should then maintain them and uh, uh, they maintain them for a year or two and then uh, they abandon it and uh, uh, people cannot use it anymore. So uh, it mm, must be. Uh, uh, developed by some institution which uh, would commit to uh, 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 support this uh, tool for years or even decades. So one of the things and why we've started with event registration and we're kind of moving out from it is exactly this problem that a lot of tools have been created over the years, a lot of workflows exist out there for stuff, and we needed to find the one with the most pain to start with. And so getting newcomers on the wikis at events was the thing that, especially with grantees, we've been he hearing a lot of pain. But this coordinating experienced editor editing activities is the thing we're hearing the most other pain about. Right, And so we're starting to think like, what's possible? What can we do to make registering for an event useful for coordinating experienced editors where our existing tools don't like to manage them, right? It, they like to manage newcomers and not experienced editors. And so that's something we're, we're exploring right now. Anyone else have any questions about the, the tool itself? Maybe we go to the next slide. And yeah, and so um, uh, the next steps right now is we're really prioritizing getting the campaign's event registration on more wikis where people are running newcomer events. So if you're interested in this, we have three of our ambassadors here, uh, Georges, uh, Anthony, and uh, Isa. Um, all of them can help you figure out how to turn it on on your wiki and advocate for it. We think you, the organizers, are the ones that are going to kind of help get it turned on on your wiki. We also plan to reach out to the CEE uh, hub to provide a little bit more structured support for that area because we know that that group of uh, wikis does a lot of work on uh, organizing these kinds of events. So we really want to reach out there. Another thing we're looking at is how do we expand into wiki projects in a way that doesn't make the assumptions of wiki projects that big wikis have right now. So we know wiki projects work really well on English and French and wiki data, but there's a lot of conditions on those Wikipedias that don't match most of the conditions on the rest of the wikis. Um, so they have a lot of editors, they have a lot of tools, they have a lot of technical capacity, they have extra time because they have a lot of editors and they have a lot of topical expertise. What we're hearing is like writing contests in other forms of collaboration are the way that 
smaller communities make editing interventions. And we, so we wanna see like, what can we do to work in the direction of wiki projects or into topical collaborations to fill gaps, to solve the problem, uh, Wikiosfera, uh, I forget her name. Ace, uh, the, the colleague that was back there. Um, oh, she just left. Oh, no, sorry, sans, Les Sans Pages. Uh, uh, she was mentioning of like, it's hard to coordinate uh, these on wiki activities as well that are, are bigger. And then um, it, folks were talking about how data and impact is really important. We're gonna begin piloting a data visualization for what we can get as the foundation analyzing these events rather than what's kind of easy to produce in things like the programs and events dashboard or other external tools. So we wanna see if we can offer like a different perspective on impact uh, that's not just about new editors and edits, but actually like how does your event lead to retention? How does it lead to other events? How does it lead to persistent content, which is what's involved in joy as an organizer, right? Like bringing people into your community and making it persistent. So those are the things we're looking at. And we need your help getting the event uh, uh, campaign extension on your wiki. We uh, need your help asking for the right. And like I said, we have the ambassadors in the room. We're doing a wiki project consultation and we have some flyers here uh, on the page. We're looking, uh, one of these consultations is uh, focused on examples of wiki projects or other collaborations that work on your wikis. So when we go and query wiki data, and we ask like, give us all the examples of wiki projects on the wikis, there's 10,000 of them. None of them operate the same way. <laughs> and those examples, many of them are stale or broken, not working, there's no community there. I click on the Vietnamese Wikipedia and there's one about um, uh, a pop musician that has like 90 articles in it and clearly active editors. I click on the next wiki that has it and there's no one there. And so it's, it's impossible for us to do good analysis. On that, we need examples. We need like good examples that help us understand this. And last, like we're here for you today to collect ideas. So that great idea, writing contests and challenges. How do we like yeah, support that? Um, so yeah, share your thoughts. We have about 20 minutes uh, that we can hang out here. Let's get some more stickies if you wanna talk about joys and pains, if you have future ideas, um, if you're why you're here, and we wanna open the room to you. Like, wh what other things have we not covered while we're here? Uh, it's not a, a new idea, it's a classic idea, but I think we need more pictures and more images and that people can use them and then also I think we should make photographs of our activities and show them around and in libraries or, or wherever on the walls and all that. Because it, what we have to show is that we're doing something human, not that we're machines, uh, machines working for the machines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that we're okay. yeah. yeah that's, that's going on that board. Well, and for us, commons and Wikidata seem like really good places to deploy this because that's where a lot of good kind of movement activity is happening around events. And so we're, we're actively in discussions with the Wikidata team. And if you want to help us advocate for commons, uh, yeah, come find us. I think Masana. Yeah, I just want to pick up on the point that Tess made. Hi, I'm Masana. I work with Alana, Alex, and Runa very closely and all of the PAs as well. Um, so maybe Alex, you want to speak about the Organizer Lab and its transition, because I think we're also curious in learning how organizers learn together and support one another. We're really trying to solve, I think the tooling part is really clear. We have our wonderful product ambassadors who've been a really big part of popularizing tool adoption, and a lot of folks know Euphemia, but we recognize that there's something else, which is how do you learn the hacks for on wiki organizing? How do you wor learn about the human or the messaging, which we've heard a lot, and Alex and I are trying to figure out, is it thematic? You know, do we cluster the work around thematic or regions or topics, or do we just have an organizer learning space where we can, you know, maybe work with Let's Connect to have something, or do we do something on Wiki? So just to see that out there is something that we're interested in supporting the community of organizers with as well. 
Yeah, and, and something I want to highlight on that, too. So we ran this program called the Organizer Lab, and I did a lightning talk yesterday about this. So if you want to go back, you can go see it. Uh, but it was really important. It was a big training, and Teslima was part of it. It was big, right? It was a lot of work. It took us about three months to go through the training, and we focused on three major themes. Uh, first, what is the topics, uh, gaps we want to solve? Who's involved? and filling those gaps and how do we recruit them? And then what does the Wikimedia movement provide to support it? Something we learned, teaching all of those tools and like one pass is a lot, right? Um, and we're actually fixing a lot of the things that we have to teach right now with these organizing tools. We're adding features all the time that's kind of solving some of this complexity um, but like you still need to be you still need to learn from humans what worked and what didn't right that's that's like how the movement so if you have ideas about training how should we support you what kinds of kind of either tools or not tools do you need um, that would be great to hear Masana you were also asking if thematic or other types of ways of framing collaboration have been the most successful for people yeah so have any of you felt that certain types of activities or collaborations have had a bigger impact that you, you want to return to again and again because that's where you're seeing your goals met? Can you come again? I didn't get to Yeah, this. so um, Masana was asking about what's working pretty much. Where are you seeing the biggest successes or your goals being met when you're organizing activities, whether it's events or other forms of collaboration? What seems to be working? Yeah. Hello. So for us, some of the things which works is um, it's actually online, not uh, physical events, but are um, edit editing contests, like for uh, more than one week, because people start getting in in the first days. More than one month is too much, but uh, you know, something in between can be working. And normally what we have is uh, a small prizes, like uh, something to buy books or CDs or whatever, something cultural that is related or yeah, something like that. I mean, no, it's not, it costs money, but it's not real money. I mean, it's <laughs> something in between. <laughs> and for very, for very small, with a very small funding, you can make a difference because people like to participate in contests. Um, we are running UK bot, that is a bot designed by an, in Norway, Norwegian Wikipedia, I think. Uh, it would be great if this wouldn't be the fourth of one guy who <laughs> has it and you have to ask him <laughs> to validate, but something why? because it, it's really great. It has stats, stats uh, it runs every two hours, whatever, and, and it's very versatile. And I think this approach is, is better than doing by, by hand. I mean, there is a machine doing that. And also as a follow-up question, you're talking about what's working is there's incentives because there's a contest, there's prizes. So it sounds like it's not so much what is the topic, but is there a sense of, you know, friendly competitive spirit that gets people motivated? Yes. I mean, the topic is important. I mean, okay. uh, whatever doesn't work, uh, it has to be very clear that we are working on that. But for example, it will be like, okay, we are looking uh, about women biographies uh, during the month of March. That makes sense. Or, I don't know, when this um, Earth Day in April, you, you can have like two weeks working on ecosystems or whatever. It's easier if you define a narrow topic, but not too narrow to be excessively niche for only two, three people who wants mm -hmm. to participate in that. Something that can have different parts but it, it works it works also with uh, i don't know asia month you you establish a month uh, a topic for example and you track that and it should be something that is limited but not uh, too wide and that in vast wikipedia is small i guess that in large wikipedias like french english or whatever you can make what, whatever you want i mean uh, train lines in bulgaria and it will work <laughs> because there is enough people to do that <laughs> it, 
It actually doesn't. Uh, and that's what we're learning, too, is like the big wikis have the exact same challenge as the small wikis, mm -hmm. but it's harder because the on wiki community Maybe. is more complex. Yeah. No, but I agree with you. This That's a really good observation. It's like these, these top, what we're finding is the communities that are most proud of their impact are doing experienced editor kind of topic gap based work that gives space for newcomers. So like the newcomers could be there, right? They could be invited and pulled along, but it's actually really growing on their experience community, which is really interesting. Whereas a lot of the newcomer events, people are feeling a lot of frustration, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's an interesting pattern we're seeing. Yeah. So um, something actually worked for the last project I organized is a kind of new project because um, it's about health. And health articles are not very common in Nigeria. So I have to be very careful with, especially since I indicated that English Wikipedia, they will be working on English Wikipedia. So what actually worked during the, the project is that uh, we separated new editors from old editors. We have a separate platform for them. So we, we know where we are focusing our energy on. So for the old editors, we didn't do much training. We just go over then. For the new editors, we separate. We gave them separate training aside. Though it was not enough, but it actually worked because we were able to get something tangible. Then we know that we are just focusing on new editors for training. Old editors are contributing more to the project. So it's actually work, and there were zero vandalism for that particular project. I got also come in the question uh, is uh, how is it possible currently to integrate uh, l some kind of prompt to organize events with uh, this tool inside the wiki project? So integrate forms? Uh, integrate into I I uh, wiki projects uh, like some kind of uh, uh, special button or something uh, to to create uh, events uh, or to go to some kind of not not really an edit page, but uh, some kind of a uh, pretty page presenting the project with uh, how it's useful uh, and a pretty page, not not just an head page. So you're asking generally how and if we could integrate the tools that we've built generally for events, but uh, for wiki for, projects? For example, uh, I'm on the um, uh, wiki project um, astronomy on the Wikipedia in French. So. Uh, how can I make uh, people aware that it's possible with, uh, without just spamming, but also making it pretty? And uh, when I can put the button so people can try to create events uh, for this Kik project? So one of the things we're exploring is like advertising wiki projects with the events and then figuring out how we can advertise this one central page for collaborations to say new editors or experienced editors. So you joined an event and then maybe you want to join a wiki project or the next event. How do we like show this to people? Um, and the other thing we're looking at with this invitation list is asking, like, who's already made edits in this space? How we can we invite them in? Maybe what we could think about and something we're, we've talked about a couple times is, like, events are kind of related to wiki projects in some way. Maybe we could make them more integrated. A lot of wikis, like Macedonian Wikipedia, doesn't have wiki projects, but they have a lot of events on different topics that there are wiki projects on other wikis, right? And so maybe you learn something from the wiki project on English about the gap on Macedonian Wikipedia, and they're associated somehow. How does that like same topic or same theme get seen in the movement. So there, there's a lot of like possibility here when like we don't have to think about one big infrastructure like a wiki project, but how do we get people express interest in a topic and then travel through the movement, all these different collaborations we want them to do? What does that look like? I hope I'm not repeating myself, but how about videos? Like a French video in French saying, you want to do this, let's go here. OK, it's in English, ignore it. Do good, press this button or this link or, or whatever like that with humor and in French. Uh, 
And then another thing with the subjects is if you could get a book cover. I don't know, now that we're getting into the wiki commons thing again, no? uh, a book cover or a painting or something that is related to the subject that will attract people to it. Take it out of the computers first. Because after all, they are tools. They aren't us. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that you're bringing up that we've also heard is how can we make whatever activity we organize more engaging and interactive and exciting for people and with that human touch so people really have a reason to stick around and do work that at times can be hard or there's a learning curve. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to write, make it feel human and engaging. Yes. That's a good summary. <laughs> okay, I want to share some experience that I have made in different projects and which engaged me to uh, now prepare something bigger. Uh, namely, that there are several things which make people engaged. On the one hand, we have good experience with templates that are the product of some kind of project um, which led to edits or to full entries being produced uh, and through these templates you get to the project page which also shows you who is in the group who does work on this uh, second activity that i also found very interesting is working together with an institution that might be willing to offer some kind of benefit so for instance i work together with uh, a library uh, in which it is not allowed to take books home. But for everyone who worked in the project, I convinced the library to give them special status so that these people who work on the project are also allowed to take um, things books home. And at the same time, because that is the Prussian uh, heritage, they are part of the Prussian Heritage Fund in Berlin. They also have free entrance to the museums that are all in Berlin. Uh, and that, of course, is a major engagement. And last but not least, that was on a, another <laughs> different project, uh, namely that you involve other stakeholders than those who are already in Wikipedia. Uh, so for instance, we uh, I worked at, um, actually it is a library which preserves uh, in original, one uh, old hall where uh, the, I don't know what the word is, the Viscount uh, preserved his collection of uh, coins. Uh, and there you see the, uh, the, all the, um, um, the no, you don't see the collection of coins because they are preserved in the museum, but you see the shelves. Uh, but shelves it's really beautiful yeah it's really like uh, yeah like um, yep yeah okay so it looks very beautiful at the same time you have a museum where the coins are and of course they have um, on the one hand they have a local uh, historical society and on the other hand I contacted the uh, numismatical society for the whole of Eastern Germany and then uh, we found people who were willing to engage in Wikipedia due to the fact that they are already committed to doing something about coins. Sorry. For yeah. So, so this is a this is a pattern. Yeah. So, so a, a one general observation on this is activists or committed knowledge advocates for a theme are a really good newcomer audience, right? They're the best to recruit, but it's very hard to target them unless you have partners. One theme, uh, uh, f whereas the general newcomer introduction is very, very hard for us to retain people in general. Um, and so this is something we trained in the organizer lab where we focused a lot on how do we teach people to do this audience selection, and we need that skill to be more widely available in the movement. In the same way that like with experienced editors, it's more about, did you express some interest in the topic already on the wiki, and can we bring you in? And so that's the kind of tooling that we're like starting to figure out how it works. Um, Camelia. 
Yeah, so incentives. It's all about these partnerships and incentives. And that's something I, you know, we haven't really thought about that much uh, with the event registration. No, we haven't. Yeah. But it's, it's good to bring it up because it also ties to some conversations that I've been having with, you know, over the course of Wikimania, the sense of, you know, an identity that can be formed. And there's different ways to form the identity, but another part of it is what benefits can be drawn, not only on the wiki, but through other institutions or partners that make it feel like you're part of something greater. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty warm, and everyone seems to be yeah, it's very warm. collapsing. <laughs> uh, so we do have a Telegram group where we're talking about these specific product interventions. Uh, we also have these flyers, some of these flyers on the table, and if you need one, there's more, where you can find short links to the different things we're working on, including a prototype, the wiki project survey I talked about, and um, uh, uh, instructions on how event registration works. If you want to add more stickies to the participatory activities, you can come up and do that. Um, and Alana and I are going to be here for the next 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, along with the product ambassadors to answer your, any questions you have about where we're going. But I really appreciate you being here. This was a wonderful conversation. And you know, you're, you're helping us build the sense of where the consensus is for things we need. Thank you. Yeah, and we're going to do any other questions here uh, up at the front afterwards. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're here. This is what we're for. <laughs>